Sounds like lots of folks have already met you, the Meet Hawaii team. We're going to have up here Lynn Whitehead, Vice President of Global MCI Sales and Marketing. Andrew Cole, Executive Director for Asia and Oceania. Just hit this. And she deserves a special round of applause for her and her entire team. General Manager of the Hawaii Convention Center, Terry Orton. Mahalo for being our host. <laughs> Folks, here is your Meet Hawaii team. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We've got about five minutes to cover everything that we're doing with Meet Hawaii before you all head to lunch. So thank you for your attention. Of course, I'm joking. It is such a pleasure to be here with you all today um, and have a face-to-face -face meeting. And today we're going to talk about the face-to-face -face meetings that we are working to bring to the Hawaii Islands. Um, I've got my representatives here from the, the Hawaii Convention Center, Terry Orton, um, and of course, Andrew Koh, who handles our, um, leads our efforts in Asia Oceania. Meet Hawaii, I always like to start off the presentations in telling a little bit about who we are. We are a collaboration between the Hawaii Visitor and Convention Bureau and the Hawaii Convention Center to showcase the Hawaii Islands as a world-class destinations for MCI business, meetings, conventions, and incentives. It is our priority under the leadership of HTA to make sure that we're bringing groups to the islands that are in line with our core pillars, and that is to bring groups that want to respect our natural resources, to book groups that want to um, learn more about our culture and weave it into their programs, and to bring groups that want to, bring, to give back to our community. We are fully staffed. As of June 30th, we are fully staffed. We have a fantastic team um, globally and domestically that is out there hitting the streets and working to bring more meetings, um, MCI business to the islands. Um, I just want to highlight, I know that we're short on time, so I'm going to try to be qu as quick as possible, but give everyone the recognition they deserve. From our single property team, we have Lori Ahara, who is, I call the uh, mayor of Meet Hawaii. She has been really great at connecting our community this year um, and leading our single property sales effort. Lee Conching leads our uh, convention services team who is an amazing resource after we book the business. Our citywide sales team, um, we've got some new players and I'm gonna go into that a little bit later. Um, Adrian Nudo is really our team lead in that department. And as for support services, we've got Josette, who really is our um, backbone of the sales team and providing the resources that you need when you're trying to connect with us and take part in the programs that we're providing. We cannot forget our Asia Oceania team. We've got Andrew Co leading the Asia Oceania team. I don't know what we would do without him. And is Chris in the room? Chris is here leading our Oceania team. We're so excited to have them. And sitting next to Lori. Lori, please stand up. And is Lee here? I just want to recognize the Meet Hawaii team. We've just got such a great organization, a great members working on our behalf and working on your behalf. There's three core groups to our uh, to our family at Meet Hawaii. The single property sales team is booking all islands, 10 rooms on peak. Their KPIs are tentative and definite room nights. They're booking all islands. Our citywide sales team is focused on groups that are 1,000 attendees or more. Um, they're, they're booking two or more hotels, and their KPIs are definite, tentative room nights, and number of events in the building. They are booking groups that are outside of 13 months. Terry's local sales team is booking um, groups that are inside 13 months. We have a very strong partnership with the Convention Center, and we're really looking forward to an exciting year ahead. Our client services team gets involved after the group has booked. Lee is working to connect your, um, the meetings that we book to our destination partners that are providing uh, 
you know, off-site venues, our destination management companies, really creating the logistics around the program once it's booked to make sure that we're maximizing the destination and really creating a successful program for that client so that we can bring them back to the destination. We're really working, uh, Lee and I and our team, to level up our uh, convention services programs for our single property team. We look forward to uh, moving in that direction in 2025. Now that you know who we are and where we are, I want to talk a little bit about, about some successes. Um, we have been, all of our team is deployed and out there and hitting all of the major markets that are focusing on our key um, market areas. Incentive business, um, IMEX America, we're heading there next week, which is a global platform for our team, 38 partners. Um, we're really looking forward to some success there. Um, in 2024, this shows you a snapshot of what we booked in the convention center for offshore business, 337, thir 335 million in economic impact, about 50,000 attendees, 107,000 total room nights. Um, in partnership, this is just the offshore business that doesn't include all of Terry's work with the local team. It really is a partnership to make sure that we get the business into the destination. Production highlights for Citywide, we're all moving into Q4. Our year's not over yet, so it's an exciting time right now. I know a lot of you are on a calendar year as well. Um, we have contracted groups for future arrivals of $274 million in economic impact for our citywide business. 69% um, of those licensed events are 2024 and 2025, and in, in 2027 we are now on pace, and we booked about 23% right now year to, uh, month, year to date. Um, for that year. We're really in a short-term booking cycle right now, but as you if you take a look at our tentative leads, eight verbal definites that our team is actually trying to close right now before the end of the year, which is very exciting. Um, if you look at our tentative leads, you'll see that the short-term booking cycle is still continuing, but it is expanding. Um, you can see 20, out 28 beyond, we have about 40% um, of those opportunities are for future. So we've got to keep an eye on that as we move into 2025 and make sure that we're um, doing all we can to um, get that future business. I just want to say, when you, when you all get a lead for 2030 and you're going, oh my God, I can't believe we have to respond to this. It's that one opportunity. Once, once we have that opportunity, it doesn't come back. So I want to thank all of you for your support when you get those opportunities in the citywide world. Single property, very successful year to date, um, 214 million in economic impact. We cannot be successful without our single property team. They are booking all islands. 42% um, of the contract events, 2024. As we look at our opportunities and tentative leads, um, we're really focused on 25 right now. The booking pace for single property is about 18 months out. DBET came out with their numbers in August for spending to the state of Hawaii. And this is a key measurement on and our success for um, how we're evaluating our business. We hit $1 billion in total spending out of MCI business to the state, which was very exciting. Um, you can see um, from this slide, it offers our visitors total length of stay. Whenever we have an MCI group that comes to the destination, they are more than likely to go to another island after the convention is, has concluded and extend their stay another four nights in our destination. The average spend went up $305. And from 2022, these are 2023 numbers. These, uh, this report comes out. Um, next August, we will have 2024 numbers. So um, it's important to know that Meet Hawaii is actually responsible for more than half of that production that came to the state. So we're looking to grow that. We were 233 million from 22 to 2023 in growth. Globally, globally, yay! <laughs> Globally, we have, we're anticipating growth. The global MCI industry is anticipating a growth from 870 billion to 1.5 trillion through 2030. That is a 9.1% compound annual growth rate in the forecasted period. The incentive market is expected to have be the highest growth market segment in the industry through 2028. I just talked about the spending that increased from 2022 to 2023. Um, 233 million to the state we increased. Um, 
2025, six, 2025 and 26, I just want to focus on the fact that we are anticipating slow growth. It may not be what we've experienced over the last three years, but we are poised for success and we've got a team in place that's going to capture these opportunities that are coming, that are out there. Um, I'm going to kind of try to speed through this so we can make sure we have enough time in between lunch. but. Single, single property, we talked about the short-term booking cycle. Incentive and corporate meetings are really our focus for all islands. It brings in the most revenue, but we have something for everyone in our state, from association business to government business. Um, we are seeing smaller room blocks across the board from citywide business to single property. Our groups are experiencing um, amazing returns on attendance. But the clients coming out of the pandemic are still a little apprehensive to contract full blocks and fear of liability. So you've got, to take an, you've got to take a look at that. But a great example of this is Pacific Chem, which has come to us, um, has been an annual repeater every five years. They're booked with us in 2025, but they're not contracting what they usually contract. They're still projecting 15,000 attendees in December. So there's opportunity for others to, to get a portion of that business. And we should work together um, more on how we can all grow more of those room nights into our hotels and increase that economic impact into the destination. In every conversation, we are including Maui and making sure that um, our meeting planners understand that we are open for business and we are strong, that island is strong and headed in the right direction. Citywide. We're so excited that we, we a little 2026 will be closing. Terry's going to talk a little bit about that, but um, we are excited for a refreshed building in 2027. The capital improvements and everything Terry has done and her team um, to put that together. It's just an exciting time for us. Short-term booking cycle continues. We are on pace for 2027. We still are behind in 28 and 29, but that short-term booking cycle, we're going to take advantage of that and really make sure that we can make an impact in those years. Uh, Full-time dedicated seller to the corporate market segment. Big mahalo to HTA for approving that position at the beginning of the year. We hired Susanna Flores from San Francisco Travel. She's based in the Northeast um, and, and has corporate as a vertical market segment and is really going to make some headway um, over the next couple of years. Regenerative tourism um, is always part of the conversation. We actually evaluate every piece of business that um, opportunity that comes through to us through um, via economic impact. We want to make sure that the economic impact meets um, measurements for the Hawaii Convention Center and the destination. We also want to make sure that we have that um, give back um, component to the destination. So support letters, I'm going to talk about that in a, in a minute. Asia Oceania, um, we've had a, a, a better recovery in the group market segment than Leisure has out of the Japan market, which is very exciting. Daito um, was a very successful group. We had JTB and HIS, you've heard. Um, a lot of people, our legislatures and our community, it was out with Andrew in Japan recently and signing the JTB MOU, which is a first time for this year and will really help to bring more corporate and incentive business um, to the islands both single property and center and citywide in the next year. Uh, Qantas is launching a flight starting May 2025. Chris is putting together some amazing programs to get more exposure around that and really drive more group business to the islands in partnership with that airline. Visa is still a main issue for Chinese groups, um, but lots of great efforts made in that market segment. Target audience, United States, Japan, Canada, Oceania, Korea, the one what? Everyone. <laughs> we don't want to let anyone go. I want to just make a, um, an important statement that we do, while we, we have um, coverage for Canada and Europe, we haven't been able to put the dollars into those market segments that we would like. But we're really going to work this year, and I'm encouraging my team to reach out to our GMTs to see what partnerships we can do with them to extend those dollars in those market segments. Top, top market segments, tentative profiles for single property, medical, pharmaceutical, trade associations. This data is taken from our database. Um, and the top states where we're receiving those opportunities are California, New York, Washington, DC. What's very interesting is when we look at the definite business that's coming um, conversion, we're really getting the pri primarily it's coming out of the Midwest. Brand highlights, when our team is out there and we're selling our destination, we're talking about accessibility globally and what that offers for Hawaii. Um, 
almost all of our groups experience increased attendance. Our Aleli program, Debbie Zimmerman is here in the room. I'd like to highlight her. We call her the secret sauce. Um, you know, I know that program has been in place for quite some time, and it is just amazing to work with Debbie um, and see all the community support that she has that helps us to close the business. I, we, it, is, it is something that is an advantage that Hawaii has. I don't know any other destination that really has that type of um, tool. Citywide strategies. Uh, two, 2027 refresh. Uh, Terry's going to go into a little bit more about this. Collaboration. I need you to know that Terry and I meet every Friday. Our citywide sales team and our local sales team meet monthly to make sure that we're booking the right groups and we're maximizing the building. It's important to know all the collaboration that goes into what both of us do for the destination. Um, we are making sure that in every year we have the right market mix between offshore groups, local groups, sports groups, corporate groups, um, association. We want to make sure that we have the right mix in every year so that we can really maximize the revenue in the building and um, bring you all business. Um, our sports strategy is very important. We're looking to bring more clarity to that conversation. It's important. You've heard a lot about sports groups over this um, during this session, so I think it's important to talk about. The local groups, Terry has had an amazing success with bringing local groups and really um, ramping up what they do for our building. Our Kuleana, as Meet Hawaii and outside of 13 months, we have Trevor Newman who is dedicated to that sports market. We just joined the Sports uh, Events Tourism Commission, which is an organization that really evaluates and um, looks at these groups from a destination perspective. So we just joined that and Trevor will be hitting that show in April. We have a partnership with Play Easy, which is going to help to track the room nights that our sports groups um, receive. And then HTA handles the sports groups from a destination perspective when the convention center is not involved. So looking forward to sharing more clarity on that as the year progresses. Um, single property strategy, more communication. What we want to do is really deliver more opportunities to communicate and partner with you. We're taking our single property sales team and we're creating island ambassadors. So every single property sales um, member is meeting with hotels and our island partners regularly and commuting back to our team so we can develop strategies that are helping each island specifically. Meredith Parkins is starting. Um, we just had an MCI update at the island of Hawaii and Meredith is getting ready to start at a monthly uh, webinar that she's going to do with the partners. So we're really looking forward to that. Citywide single property, we're all at, we're at the shows we need to be. We are doing direct sales calls, educational webinars. We're in the market segment. Um, we are trying to create partnerships that add value to what you do and extend your dollars. Our Asia Oceana team, I can't say enough about them. Um, Chris is my uh, social media expert. We're gonna, be, we're gonna be really working on enhancing that and he's gonna be leading the way for our team. Um, but the Japan Corporate Seminar, Aloha Reception, Meet Hawaii Japan Aloha Ambassador Program, Strategic MOU with two major wholesalers in Japan. I don't want to let Andrew down, which is why I'm going bullet point by bullet point. <laughs> He's done such an amazing job. Um, Korea and Oceania Sales Missions, Association Forum Australia, and the Business Expo in New, Ze New Zealand are just some um, highlights. Website re redesign. We redesigned our website in March. We're taking some of those tools and we're going to start um, creating more landing pages and really bring that into our client services program. Um, we want to level up the resources that our groups have after they sign that contract. So um, looking forward to sharing that with you in the new year. Partnership opportunities, as Jay said, they're listed on the HTA website. They're also on our HVCB website. I encourage you to keep a look at that. Our team is constantly trying to develop um, partnership opportunities that some arise, arise in the year for the year. So um, please keep um, an eye out on all of the different communication tools that we have out there so you can keep up with that information. And last but not least, this is the best way. Our, our platform for Meet Hawaii is really linked in, and we really want to grow um, the presence on this um, page in the next year. And if you could help us by liking this page, sharing it, we need to be supporting all of you. So when you all make a post, we want at Meet Hawaii to follow that, repost it, and really get more exposure. It's the best way to get our name out there. 
And this will take you right to our team. And now I'm going to bring up Terry Orton, General Manager of the Hawaii Convention Center. Terry has done such an amazing job. She's been, I've worked under her and now work with her on a daily basis and it has just, it's an exciting time for the Convention Center. Thank you for your time. Thank you. This one? That's four, that's five. This is four, okay. Well, aloha everyone. Of course, I'm in between you and lunch. So I will make this brief. Um, and I apologize, I am on the tail end of getting over bronchitis, so I told Lynn, if I start coughing profusely, I'm going to signal you, and she's going to finish my presentation, so please bear with me. Um, well, I want to thank all of our partners, um, one who have stuck it out till the second day of, of our conference here, and for all your contributions and support that you have given us here at the Hawaii Convention Center, I always use the analogy of one canoe because I feel we're all in one canoe and we all need to paddle together in the same direction to accomplish the task. And no one person can paddle the canoe alone. Um, they could, but it might take a long time. So um, I always use the analogy with Lynn and her team. We're in one canoe, we each have our, our responsibility and Kuliana in our seat. Um, our job is to navigate and to steer the team in the right direction um, and hopefully catch a few waves along the way. So a decade of growth, and I, and I reference to a decade. Um, I work for ASM Global, which is the company that was hired here by Hawaii Tourism Authority to manage this convention center. And I'm happy and humbly proud to say that we just won the next 10 years management contract here at the Hawaii Convention Center. So I want to thank HTA and thank all of you for your support. We have a lot of work to do and we are excited to be a part of this team and to continue our efforts. So we celebrate this decade of growth here at the Hawaii Convention Center. Um, the Convention Center has evolved into a dynamic venue for both international, national, and local events, as you've heard today, serving as a key driver to economic growth and a hub for, our cultural, for cultural engagement. Um, over the past year, together, we have successfully hosted 250 events here at the Convention Center in our fiscal year, ending 24, which just ended this past June. Um, so it's the new year for us here. That included 20, 21 citywides, which welcomed over 410,000 attendees. This remarkable achievement has generated over $390 million for the state in spending and $45.7 million in tax revenue. So as you can see, the business that does move through the convention center is quite a, a contributing factor to our state TAT and economic impact. Record-breaking financials, as you keep hearing. Um, you know, this doesn't come without everyone in the canoe helping to paddle in the right direction. Our success is a win-win for everyone. I think Lynn and I have finally figured out the ingredients to make the special secret sauce that we keep talking about, which is a win-win for everyone, and that is to fill our Waikiki hotels with offshore groups, finding the right mix of business, which is so important. Um, you know, we keep saying we want the mindful traveler, the traveler that um, is going to go out to dinner, that's going to go shopping, that's going to go out and take optional tours, that also is taken into consideration when we're looking at the mix of business that we want to target here. And then, of course, growing our local events and indoor activities such as sports, festivals, concerts, and public shows. Partnership is key to our success here. As Lynn mentioned, um, we meet weekly. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not on the phone or on a text message with Lynn. Um, just always looking for opportunities to grow um, our business here at the Convention Center. That leads right into our team here. Um, I know Lynn had showed um, the faces of the citywide sales team that works hand in hand with our local sales team. And they're here today. If I could just ask you all to rise so that we can acknowledge you. Um, our local sales team has grown our local sales revenue from $4 million in 2014 to over $14.8 million in closing of this last fiscal year. So kudos to our team. Um, we always say that our local sales team fills whatever pukas are in the calendar that our citywide sellers have not filled. So they've done a good, good job in filling all the pukas. 
I'd like to highlight um, one of our other successful endeavors, and that's growing our local and cultural events here at the Convention Center. And I know many of you have been here in the last month. We've had a lot of activity. Um, events like Okinawan Festival, Made in Hawaii, Honolulu Festival, um, all of these cultural events that we want to grow and nurture and help be successful here adds to the secret sauce that we have. And through these partnerships, we've not only provided a platform for celebrating our local cultures, but it also has contributed to our growth in local revenue. Our commitment to expanding indoor sports at the Hawaii Convention Center has been a key driver to our efforts to help diversify our business. With strategic investments in portable sports courts, we have been able to transform our convention center into a premier venue for athletic events. These courts have enabled us to host events such as volleyball, basketball, indoor soccer, futsal, and other, um, other sports events as well. Looking ahead, we're looking to expand our capabilities by investing in additional sports equipment, including specialized cheerleading dance floors. Thank you, Andrew. He just bought us a, a cheerleading group um, that we purchased these floors for, and they're committed to coming year after year to use our facility. And we also recently um, have purchased 45 indoor pickleball courts. Yeah, we're very excited about that. Our first pickleball tournament is November 1 and 2 and 3. So please um, register. They have over 365 teams to date. Um, we're very excited. Um, we know that this is going to be the next hot sports activity here at our convention center. And these additions reflect our ongoing commitment to providing a top tier facility that can host an array of sports activities. Sustainability. Our sustainability efforts here is really the anchor of our program, Ho'omoluo. This, ref this reflects our deep respect for Hawaii's natural culture and resources. Recently achieving a renewal of our LEED Goal certification and pioneering innovative programs like our reforestation and carbon offset. We really wanted to create turnkey sustainability and regenerative initiatives that Lynn and her team can basically just tell a meeting planner we have a plethora of a menu of things that you can choose from to help return and restore and to make the place better than you found it. So some of these initiatives, as I mentioned, tree planting and another one is Genki Balls in our Alawai, helping to make that a better place. Perpetuating Hawaiian culture, arts and music in the convention center Beyond being a world-class meeting destination, Hawaii Convention Center prides itself um, in engaging with our local culture and heritage. From museum quality exhibits to live performances, we are proud to create a platform that celebrates and preserves the traditions that make Hawaii so special. Helping our community. Hawaii Convention Center had the honor and pleasure of serving during the pandemic we provided space for es essential government services like unemployment claims processing and contact tracing. And most recently, in August of 2023, we served as a shelter for those affected by the Maui wildfires, underscoring our commitment to being a resource to our community. Future plans for the Convention Center. The next 10 years, we're excited. And in 2026, we're going to undertake a $64 million construction project here across this breezeway <laughs> to fix our leaks. We're very grateful. I want to thank our legislators, our governor, and Hawaii Tourism Authority for um, allocating this money so that our team can service better and provide a world-class facility. This has been a long-awaited project. We are very, very excited to get this started. Um, as Lynn mentioned, we are partially closing the convention center in 2026 to take advantage not only of completing our $64 million rooftop renovation, but there's probably, we have $145 million 
of capital improvement project upgrades and repairs over the next six, six years. We're looking to condense a lot of those projects and take advantage of the time that we're closing the building so that in 2027 when we open up, I don't have to worry about flash flood warnings anymore. So <laughs> we're excited about those um, enhancements. Food and beverage. Um, we invested roughly about $8 million in food and beverage equipment. All the china that you are eating off of at this event is all brand new. Um, the china that we were using was 26-year-old china. Um, I don't know who eats off of the same plates they ate off of 26 years ago, but we were. So we bought all new equipment, and I want to thank Hawaii Tourism Authority. We are upgrading our food and beverage um, service and equipment, so we're very excited about that as well. Future plans, and these are some of the things that we're hoping to get done during our um, closure period in 26, and that is upgrading our concession areas. Um, we're looking to upgrade and undergo a significant um, refresh of our lobby concession, um, 1801, and our third floor concession, as well as introducing a frictionless grab-and-go concept. And then our most recent endeavor business endeavors, we're excited to announce that we're partnering with Pecan Group, which is the same group that bought, bought Monet and Van Gogh immersive experiences to the Hawaii Convention Center a few years ago. Using cutting edge technology, we are creating an engaging holiday immersive show, Twas the Light Before Christmas, opening November 22nd, and the show will run through the holidays. With the integration of cutting edge technology, we'll, we will be able to create more engaging experiences to bring the community and visitors to our center. So please go to the website, grab a ticket. Some other upgrades, um, as we said, technology is gonna be a key focus for us in upgrading a lot of our things in our convention center. One of them, of course, being digital signage, um, looking at putting LED digital signs like the one here in this room throughout our building, and this will also serve as an opportunity for meeting planners to sell this to exhibitors um, and help grow their revenue as well. And lastly, to elevate our attendee experience, we're introducing a live attendee survey to capture real-time feedback. So if you go to any of our digital displays in our convention center, you can take a snapshot of that QR code and fill out our survey, it's actually live. So if there's something, if we're, something happened in the restroom and it needs a t uh, an attendant to service, you can go to this survey. It actually will go right to the housekeeping department and we can address it while the event is actually happen happening. So hopefully at the end of their conference, all of the challenges that have arise during their event have been resolved. So as we look to the future, the Hawaii Convention Center will continue to innovate, grow, and serve as a world-class venue that celebrates Hawaii's unique culture while providing state-of-the-art amenities. With these planned upgrades and our ongoing commitment to sustainability and community engagement, we are excited for the opportunities that lie ahead. Mahalo. <laughs>